Photoshop is a very vast program and there's a lot of ways of doing things. But sometimes if you don't do them the right way, your images can appear soft and not sharp and crisp, or it takes you a lot longer to do a task than what you expected. Right now, I'm gonna give you five common mistakes that people do in Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So today we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you five common mistakes that people make in Photoshop because sometimes when you're just self-taught, you may not realize the best practices and there's reasons behind them. Let's jump in right now. So number one is to invert a mask, don't fill it. Let me explain right now with an illustration that I've made. So here's something that I illustrated in Photoshop and we can use as an example. So say these tentacles that I've been drawing, I want to kind of make them maybe a little redder or a little bluer on the ends. So what I would do is I would go in and I would make my adjustment layer here. And why don't we just go in and do a curves adjustment. Under the curves adjustment, I'm going to grab the color. Maybe we're going to give it a little more blue. Okay, so notice now it's affecting the whole thing and not just the ends. I just want to do the ends. Okay, so here's a mistake that people make is they want to fill this with black so it hides everything. So what they do is they go down here and hit command backspace to fill it with black, which hides the contents of this layer. Now we grab the brush and with a brush here, we're just going to paint on our mask with white. And we can just add our blue tips here. All right, so that's great. So what's the problem here? Okay, I'm going to show you the problem and the solution. So the problem here is if we decide to rescale anything or we decide to move it, notice only that area that was visible at the time received the uh, black mask. Everything else is unmasked. Okay, let's step back and do this properly. Okay, so after applying our curve, rather than filling it with black, we can go to our properties panel and we can click invert, or we can hit control I, or that would be command I, which inverts the mask. Now we paint, there's our blue, we resize, and notice everything looks right. And that's because we actually turned it into a black mask instead of just filling that area that was visible. Number two, the sins of scaling. All right, so here we have a business card that I'm working on. And as you can see here, uh, the person on the card is really having a bad day. But one of the things that people tend to do is noodle a lot with sizing. So it's one thing to design something, but then we scale things. We make them a little bigger, a little smaller, bigger and smaller until we finally get everything in balance. So here's a problem. I'm just gonna hit Command J to duplicate this and hide it. So we've just made a copy of just that picture. And this is what we tend to do. We hit Command T for free transform. And then we'll scale something up, you know, um, obviously I'm exaggerating this. Then we'll move it around and we're like, well, I don't like it there. Let me go a little bit smaller. What if we do small over here? Maybe we could put that there or up here. What if we want to put it here? Hmm. And then, you know, you just keep noodling with this and let's just take it back to more or less the original size. Here's a problem with this. If we look at this image, and I'll just hide these quickly, that we've just scaled a couple of times compared to the original, look how much quality we've already lost in that image. So transforming an image over and over again will cause the quality to deteriorate. The solution to that is a smart object. So let me just make another copy, just control J, just so we can compare it. And I'm gonna move this off to the side here. So before I start scaling this, I'm gonna right click and choose convert to smart object. Now I can make this huge. I can make it tiny. And I can go back to the original size and because it's a smart object, compared with the original, it's lost no quality compared to the other one that we scaled. Now bear in mind, if you are using a smart object, it still doesn't miraculously bring back resolution when you enlarge an image. It just enables you to do a lot of manipulation without losing the quality. Number three is the eraser tool. It's a wonderful tool. Pull it out, hit the E key to use it, 
play around in Photoshop, experiment with it, enjoy it as much as you like on your first day and never use it again. You should never use an eraser tool on an image. You should always use a layer mask. There's an exception to that when you're doing things like distress type and certain special effects. All right, so let's grab the eraser tool and we want to work on this window. I start painting away. You know what? I went over. I, I want to fix this. Problem is if I option click and show that layer, I can't. I've just done the equivalent of taking a pair of scissors and cutting a hole out in my photograph. And now there's no way to bring that back apart from doing undo. But if I close this document, come back later, there is no undo redo. Let's look at the proper way. Okay, instead of using the eraser tool, we want to apply a layer mask. So we apply the layer mask. It's white by default. We want to choose a black brush. So we're going to grab a brush, make sure it's black. And then when we paint in black, what it does is it paints away that layer. And it's just like the eraser tool, except if I go back to a white brush, I can bring it back. So it's completely non-destructive. So don't be tempted to reach for that eraser. Always reach for that layer mask. And number four is don't ever clone stamp directly onto a photograph or a layer. So here's a shot I did of Whitney. And, you know, if we wanted to get rid of this lamp in the background here, we could, you know, grab our clone stamp tool. I mean, there's a lot of tools we could use, but let me just quickly make this large just to illustrate. So if I hit the Alt or the Option key, I can start painting away here and getting rid of that. But once again, the problem here is... If I want to change this, I can't. So now I'm doing the equivalent of getting paint and painting directly onto my photograph. If I want to change my mind later, I cannot. We always want to work non-destructively. Let's look at the correct way. Before I apply my clone stamp, the first thing we want to do is create a new layer. Then what we want to do with the clone stamp selected, sample, current, and below. Or all layers. And now if I hit the Alt or the Option key to take a sample, I can start painting here with my clone stamp. And if I don't like it, it's on a separate layer. So I can always go back and adjust it. Bonus tip. When we're doing complicated cloning where there's a lot of areas we want to preserve, just go ahead and grab the clone stamp and then just clone that area. Don't worry about the edges with a large clone stamp. Then you can go back with a layer mask and refine that cloning and paint back the areas where you went over and you're gonna look like a wizard of the clone stamp. And tip number five, make sure you preserve your layers, don't flatten unless you absolutely have to. So here's an illustration that I created of an, the original iPod and maybe I wanna apply something like maybe go into Camera Raw. Okay, so here's all the layers that I created in the iPod and if I can show and hide them, and if I want to put it all through, say, a camera raw filter, I don't want to flatten it. What I've done is I've put it into a group. So there's two options here. One is to take that group, right click, and convert it to a smart object. And that way I can apply my filters or whatever I want to the smart object. I can go back in here and you can see the layers are going to be intact by double clicking on the smart object. Or the other option is to hide everything that we don't want to show. So now we're just showing our iPod. Go to the top here, and then we're going to hold down Shift, Alt, Control, and that would be Shift, Option, Command on Mac, and E. So this creates a layer with all the visible elements merged into it without flattening the other layers. So if I turn off my layers here, I can turn that on. Notice everything else is still there. But now I can take this individual layer, I can apply the filters, I can warp, I can do whatever I want, or in this case, I was gonna go into camera raw filter. And now it applies it to all of the layers. So we can see the original here. And there's our adjusted one. All right, guys, question for you. Which of these was your favorite and how many of these did you already know? Let me know in the comments underneath, just drop a comment. And if you like these kind of tutorials where it's substance without hype, hit that subscribe button right now, become part of the cafe crew, and you'll get a new tutorial from me every Tuesday and sometimes some additional ones. Hit that little notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. Don't forget, 
smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Thank mm-hmm. you.